Fit for Life Radio, episode number 82. Your hosts, Coach Will. What's up? Coach Gary. Coach. Sup. 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 Sup, bro. Today, it's about, about that time. Here we are, recording this on June 11th. It's beach season, baby. Beach season. F- official, unofficial start to summer was Memorial Weekend. Yeah. And then I think the official summer's around, what, like June 20th or something yeah, like that? Yeah, June 20th, so like right after Father's Day. Yeah. Fun fact, June 20th is the summer, what is it called, so- Solist? Solstice. Solstice, which is basically the, like the longest day of the year. It's like the... the it's the turning point. Mm-hmm. Then from there, everything gets shorter. Everything. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, what we're talking about today, how to navigate your barbecues. How do we get through cookouts? Pool days. Beach days. Beach days. You know, hot girl summer. How do yeah. like how do we keep it that way? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How that's, to handle it? How to navigate? Because for re- like last summer was just a wash. Let's be real. And you don't want to be the person that's like, I'm on. I can't. I'm on X diet. Yeah. Like oh, sorry. Yeah, I can't do it. No thanks. Just ice chips for me today. Mm-hmm. Oof. Mm-mm-mm. Do you remember like people that used to wrestle that would do that? They would just eat ice. Walk around in cut sweat and suits with saran wrap wrapped around their body. <laughs> So if you're an adult that doesn't wrestle and you still do that, please don't. <laughs> please don't. There's other ways. All right. Let's start with, yeah, general, a lot of times on the weekends, people are grilling out, cooking out. You know it, baby. You got <sighs> ants you never knew of. Not Well, you got ants. You got both ants. You got family ants. And you got ants. Ants, ants. and uncles bringing you casserole dishes. And you got ants. Why crawl, do, crawling why, in your house. Why do people still make casseroles? I guess because they're real easy. Mm-hmm. And some of them are good, but... So I think really one thing to navigate here in general is typically people might be having some adult beverages, some alcohol. Dude, that's the hardest one. And that's going to lower your inhibitions. So I think, you know, going into it ahead of time, you kind of have to have a game plan of... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be mentally weak, you know? Yeah. Um, now, I guess what we can do is, I'll talk about what I would just do personally, not saying that it's right or it's the only way, but just, yeah, this is what I do, give people ideas, and then we can kind of oh, yeah. Yeah, break, break down. Out. So luckily, most cookouts and grilling barbecues involve meat, meat. right, which is just Lots protein and fat. For the most part, I do pref- eat a higher-carb diet. Um but those carbs are typically, for lack of better words, clean carbs. Simple. So fruit, rice, things like that, not a ton of stuff added to it. Um, I kind of know that's what it is. So with you know cookouts and, and whatnot, I'll basically avoid, because most of the casserole dishes and car, you know, tons of, because normally like, a casserole, a lot of people think that's carbs. Maybe there's a potato and a potato casserole, but it's also like tons of mayonnaise and milk oils. And cheese. And so it's just a super huge calorie bomb. And I also know I'm going to be drinking, which is calories. And once you start, it's e- a lot of times it's easier for me, I know, just to have, not have it at all. To have nothing, yeah. Right? If I start, then I'm not stopping. For sure. So don't. I'm not even going to go there, right? So I'll more stick to the meats. And alcohol. Alcohol and meat. (laughs) So the protein, the great thing about the protein-based stuff is it's going to help fill you up or satisfy you somewhat. Um, So you can kind of pick out on that a little bit. If you want to even take a step further, you can kind of, let me try to get a little bit leaner cuts. That's the great thing about barbecue. Even if it was, say, fatty or ground beef, shoot, a lot of times when they've done tests, you know, almost half of it will... Yeah, cook if, you're, off. if you're grilling. Um, yeah. So yeah, try to. Or in most people will have like chicken breast or something like that. Obviously, if there's barbecue chicken versus fried chicken that someone brings, I'll try to avoid the fried. Yeah. And yeah, so I'll stick to protein, and then my drinks. So and then which could be. Trulies. Trulies. I've actually prefer Trulies over White Claws. I like the lemonade ones. Mm, I don't think I had those. The yet. fruit punch ones are good too. Are they? And, you know, so if someone offers a beer or grab a beer, if that's what, what's available, I'm not, every time I drink beer, I'm like, nah, 
I'm the same way. I'm reminded why I don't ever drink it. Yeah. I'm like, man, this is just. And then the other week I had, someone had the, um, they're like vodka soda drinks. Yeah. You told me about those, but I haven't had one yet. Oh, what are they called? Are they good? Yeah, they were good. Vodka soda. Let me see here. Pull it up. Oh, Google faithful. They did. It, last time we tried to log into something, it let you down. I know. And I just realized as we were saying it. <laughs> I, I, I forgot to look that up and give the people what we promised. Oh, man. Eventually, we'll get it. High noon. High noon. And now a lot of places are making them um, cut water. It's another brand. They got like vodka sodas in a can. But I yeah, mean, the, one, the first one was the high noon. So it's yeah, like vodka soda in a can with like a little, a little flavor. flavoring. A little sprinkle. Um, obviously, if you start going the, hey, let's mix up some margaritas and you're using a mixtures with a ton of calories. I mean, that's just you, yeah. something you want to be conscious of. If you Let's go back and listen to our Mexican restaurant one. About the skinny margs. And then and you'll, you'll learn. So if you're going to partake in that, it's probably best to not eat at all. Or eat before you go. You know, it's just some lean protein, protein shake, something That's like that. That's the Ben method, man. Veggies. Ben just eats a full meal before he goes somewhere, and then he's just, yeah. he's all right. That's another option. But I prefer to partake some. and On the same way. You know, be come off as relatively normal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, normally for something like that, I, I'm going to take this, a similar approach to you. But um, also, like, planning my meals like around it too. Like mm-hmm. say we have a cookout at, I don't know, one o'clock. My breakfast will probably just be protein, you know? So Ooh. it'll probably be like yogurt and protein powder and then planning to have most of my calories at the cookout. And then maybe having, you know, something lean for dinner. Basically two of my meals are going to be bare minimum, pretty much protein based. And then it just leaves me a lot more room mm-hmm. at the cookout to still partake, but not completely like blow my weekend out of the water. But I'm also going to go for, you know, a zero, well, I say zero calorie, a low calorie alcohol choice, you know, so like the Trulies Mm -hmm. or even just mixing, you know, liquor with a zero calorie soda, something like that. Like a dude, vodka with a Sprite Zero, anything like that. Like that's what I would do. Um, And then, you know, make the the main focus, you know, grilled meat, Um, you know, if there's a burger. Like I, I might still have a bun. Mm-hmm. That's about the extent of it, but not going overboard on mac and cheese and yeah. all of the casseroles and things like that. So I'm still going to stack my plate with burgers, dogs, chicken breast, pretty much, you know, the yeah. usual things that I would normally eat anyways, you know, barring yeah. the hot dogs, but yeah, what you do the rest of the day is super important mm-hmm. and really makes a big difference. And that's what, what I do as well is just, I non-fat plain greek yogurt yeah have that for like my first or second meal knowing i have the cookout coming up or for, for lunch or whatever mm-hmm. and if it's like a beach day same thing i like to have drinks at the beach so i'll have a you know low fat low carb high protein meal leading up to it and no i'm gonna have a lighter dinner and then for the most part I don't eat at the beach because I don't like eating out in the hot sun like that. And what, what are you normally going to eat? Like goldfish and yeah. stuff. So it's Snacks. like, well, you're not eating out of nourishment. You would just be eating out of, exactly. you know, I'm bored or Boredom. this is what I do. So um, it's a lot easier to know, hey, I'm just going to have drinks instead. <laughs> Those are my calories mm-hmm. and enjoy, you know, that. And it's easier to get a buzz. So, yeah. Um, you know, the rest of the day is a huge factor. If you're having a barbecue or a beach day or a pool day, you got to plan around it. Yeah. And a lot of times with summer comes like brunch, Mm -hmm. which is a big one. Like if you start your day with like an all out brunch, you're already probably like 2000 calories deep. Yeah. You know, you get mimosas, maybe like two mimosas and then I don't know, eggs Benedict or Mm -hmm. you're going to be dropping some cows I'm and like, and then you're going to a cookout after that. So mm-hmm. like you're probably eating like 4,500 calories or more yeah. that day. I'm going to go a step further too and say another thing that people need to do is, look, you have to practice and push yourself a little with going periods of time without eating. 
you know, I notice a lot of people, they can't have a snack every two hours. They get nervous. They get nervous. And the reality is like you can go days without eating, right? Yeah, just drink uh, some not water. saying you need to start with a 24 hour fast, but, you know, have breakfast at six and have lunch at noon and push those six hours and realize like you're going to be fine. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a lot of, um, you know, habit and blood sugar stuff and because we do eat all the time. So if you just more have a little bit bigger meals, space them out, you'll be more comfortable with going the longer periods without food and realize you don't need yeah. it. When you realize you're going to be okay, like, yeah, you know, it's kind of empowering to know that. But then also too, when you have like, oh, I'm going to have, you know, we just cook out and sometimes we're at weird times, right? Like 2 p.m. Yep. So you'll know, cool, I can have breakfast at six, seven, eight, and then I'll be good. I'm not eating till the cookout, right? And you'll be fine. Or you don't. Or if you're going to the beach in the middle of the day or the pool, you know, okay, well, yeah, I'll have a couple drinks and just wait till dinner. I'll be eating then. Mm-hmm. You don't have to bring a ton of snacks, nah. you know, because, yeah, you're not. And those snacks aren't going to fill you up. Eating them. Cheese its aren't going to fill you up. Yeah. They're good, but they're not going to do anything. So, no. yeah, that's a, that's a really good one to to check in yeah. on basically so lot, you need to plan yeah and a lot of this is realizing look if you're gonna have a cookout in these social events where shoot you may even ignore just have whatever you want so yeah you're eating 2,000 3,000 calories you don't need any other food the rest of the day yeah you're fine and you can think ahead of time enough to know i'm about to have a 3,000 calorie meal i don't i, I should just wait until then yeah and, and if then you, if you think that sounds like crazy well then you could also argue that, well, why are you eating 3,000 calories at once? That's yeah, crazy exactly. Too. You're eating like, more than a not, day's worth so of food. So skipping a meal is not that crazy. No. Um, it, like when we're going to go basically binge on stuff. Yeah. It's not. If you know that's what's going to happen. And honestly, if I am not going to make any changes, like I know, hey, I'm not going to just stick to the proteins. I'm going to avoid the casseroles. If I'm literally like, I'm just going ham, then yeah, I literally will just fast and up until that, and then have that the event, food and then, and then just eat whatever then be done with your day mm-hmm. and then i'll eat tomorrow <laughs> and it's interesting because then a lot of people will you know there's now with the whole you know intuitive eating and all this and all that um and people would think that you should well don't don't not eat right that but the reality yeah, i'm is, hungry i have to eat no that's being responsible like yeah. that's knowing what's coming up that's being aware um, and recognizing, you know, the situations because the fact that we have all that food available and we're literally going to know we're going to sit there until we're stuffed. Um, you're trying, you ha- you need to counter that. Yeah. Don't ignore that and realize that you can go plenty of time without eating. Um, and it's okay to skip meals. Yeah. And with intuitive eating, like you still have to understand context of your mm-hmm. whole day, you know? Like if you're eating mostly whole foods and all of that, like it, you can pretty much go on your cues. Yeah. But if you're going to a barbecue and you're going to have, you know, like I said, macaroni and chips and snacks, banana pudding, banana, <sighs> banana pudding, then you have to realize that, well, these are really processed and they're not going to fill me up like my normal foods, foods would. So I can't listen to my cues today. Yeah. And that's just what you have to do. You can't just go like, I'm always going to listen to my cues no matter what I eat because that's going to steer you in the wrong direction. You know, Mm -hmm. so part of being experienced and, you know, listening to yourself is, you know, understanding the bigger picture of your day and your week as well. Yep. And then another thing to consider is like, what do you do the day after? You know, you ball out at the, at a cookout on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Are you going to need a normal days of food? Probably not. Yeah. So you could probably even eat a little bit lighter, which is kind of what I would do too. Um, especially if I went real hard, Mm -hmm. which, you know, nothing wrong with it. Um, but I might eat, you know, more just like protein based meals and, you know, a little lower carb than normal and yeah. be okay. It's interesting how uncomfortable people are with being aware and doing that. I saw an Instagram story or post the other day where someone, it's like a coach or something. They were saying what, you know, what to do if you have like a binge day. And they said, you know, the next day, don't try to eat less to make up for it. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, 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 I understand that approach that. and that purpose mm-hmm. of like, um, not you're almost, it's probably more so you're not like shaming it or yeah, saying it's mentally bad. not freaking but out. But then I'm like, well, you're also choosing kind of to ignore that it happened and it, you ate more food that mm-hmm. day, right? Like all it's, it doesn't have to be like a shameful thing or like a, you know, yeah, like, it's not a, like disordered eating a pro- thing. Yeah. It's, it's literally like, you're just noticing I ate 
a lot of food yesterday. And maybe I probably don't need as much today. Yeah. And that's fine. And you eat a little less. And I think it probably depends on where you're at too, mentally mm-hmm. and with, you know, if you are trying to lose weight, like where are you yeah. at in the process? Because for some people that might be a, a better way to go at first. And then as you get more experienced, you know, switching to, hey, I need to eat a little bit less because I ate more. Yeah. You know, it's just something that comes with time and, and doing all of mm-hmm. this. Because not everyone would be ready for eating less. Like that might freak them out even yeah. more too. So it's hard. So yeah, so that's kind of our approaches. Another good one is for a lot of people is have a little bit of everything, but limit yourself to, I'm just going to have, you know, a spoonful of each to try them. Now, like I said, for some that I know for me, that's hard. Yeah, I just want nah, more. I'm going to go eat all But of a it. lot of people, you know, you, so yeah, you're just managing your portions and you're eating until you're satisfied and not stuffed. So you are listening to those internal cues. It's mm-hmm. going to be harder. Like I said, the foods. Yeah, it's way harder. They want you to overeat them. But if you can practice feeling what that just that satiated feeling feels like and not stuffed and just kind of have a little bit and move on, uh, you will find that you actually can do these events, partake in yeah. everything. And, and you don't feel like you're missing anything yeah. when you're able to do that. And you feel fine. You feel great. You're mm-hmm. not going to have those overeating lethargic feelings. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run, up early and home late. So having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because it was, I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop, mixed in water, once a day, and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process, so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash provengrit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. You know, your stomach's like about the pop. Yeah. It's not even about feeling stuff. It's, it's, it's like mentally, you oh, know, yeah, the mental done. It's the legit physical of overeating. Mm-hmm. We've all been there though. So those are the main ones kind of set up a parameter of rules. Like I'm only going to have these foods. I'm going to stay away from these. Yeah, and you're creating some boundaries and rules or another could just be, hey, I'm going to eat real slow, real mindful. I'm going to just pour, have small portions, one plate. And then you can eat whatever you want. You know, you have, them have one plate, get a little bit of everything on this one plate and I'm done after that. Yeah. And it, it can be a little easier at like a, you know, something social because mm-hmm. you are talking and you're hanging out. So if you can just munch on your food and know like this is my one plate, then you're probably going to be OK. Yeah. And another thing, too, to remember, like. We'll use a beach as an example because it's a little bit different. What what you bring is what you're going to have to eat. Mm-hmm. So like bite the bullet when you're planning it and only bring what you want to eat. You know, like we talked about not bringing a ton of snacks and maybe just bringing some drinks or something. What if you I'll, want to eat a tray of banana pudding? Eat a tray of banana pudding and just work around mm-hmm. it. <laughs> but you would have a good cooler. I mean, those Yeti, those some, Yeti coolers, hey, man. Whip out some banana pudding at the beach. I'm going to do it. Just the whole tray of it. People ask you if they can have some. Be like, nah. nah just eat it with me. one spoon. Like yeah, whole, one serving yeah. spoon. But um, but yeah, like just you're in control of what you bring. So like a barbecue is a little different because there's, I don't know, it's usually a potluck. It's whatever mm-hmm. everybody brings. But at the you know beach or the pool, it's just this is what we got, and you can chill on that. Yeah. You know, you could do what Ben does and just bring like a a boiled chicken breast yeah. <laughs> and just munch on that. Um. And obviously, the a big thing here is if you have kids, right? That's, so you're going to bring food for them. Yeah. Uh, but one thing to realize and remember is, you know, when kids are truly hungry, like they'll they'll eat. ask. I was yeah. at the beach the other day, and I noticed I heard 
and th- this is a whole a whole thing. This is right? a whole episode. You know, we are the generation of the clean your plate club. Yes. So when we were kids, you have to finish your plate no matter what, right? So from a young age, we all got pretty messed up. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're interrupting our natural cues. Yeah, you know, like one that people still kind of know is well, when you got to pee, right? You feel the urge, you know, I have to go use the bathroom. Yep. Well, guess what? Like that's how eating should be. Um, but so a perfect example, like kid kids were playing, they're probably like six years old, and then the mom was like, "Hey, you know, are you hungry?" And he was like, "No, mom, I'm fine." You know, and then kept running. She's like, no, you need to come eat now, you know? And it's like... He didn't need it. No. He was good. And and and, uh, and then it's, you know, and obviously this is a whole nuanced subject, but Very. it was like chips and crackers and stuff like that. So then it's really like, so he didn't even really want to eat. He's forced to eat. Now he stopped to, and he starts munching on these foods that are engineered to, to want you to want eat more. more and to where he's just crushing a bunch of food when he wasn't necessarily hungry or would have been. And the reality is, yeah, I mean, kids, I mean, people, humans, like they'll make it to dinner time, mm-hmm. you know, We're and, gonna be and, okay. and being hungry isn't an emergency. It may an hour or two later than gotten hungry and dinner's in another two hours. And he'd have been good. You'll, they'll be fine. You know, so it, you probably don't need to bring as many snacks as you think. Nah. Um, Just, really it's have some hydration, you know, each kid gets a chicken breast. <laughs> <laughs> Whip out a chicken, yeah. So, hey, if you're hungry enough, mm-hmm. you'll eat it. Yeah. A good thing I think for kids is um, like cheese sticks and stuff. So yeah. it's going to be yeah, it's cheese, right? So it's a uh, whole food. It's protein. It's a little bit of fat. So you're getting some energy mm-hmm. nutrients. Yeah, that's actually. A you're not one. necessarily going to sit there and whack back uh, ten of them. Whack back ten of them and. Um, I mean, I can eat a whole block of cheese, but Dude. when I'm full, I'm full. So I always tried to like cheese sticks mm-hmm. when I was a kid. Everyone would get them. And I was like, I just wanted to be cool because mm-hmm. everyone else ate cheese and I hated it. And I would always try it. And then ne- to this day, like I won't eat a cheese stick. I just, it's a waste of food for me. It's out, man. Nah, it's just not good. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like how cheese tastes by itself. So sharp cheddar. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? Bro, it's disgusting. Um, My body doesn't want it. So, yeah, try and have more meal-based stuff. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, just the snacky yeah, things. Remember, then that's just going to become a habit. You know, mm-hmm. let the kid be really hungry first and ask. You know, they're going to be fine. We can run around. We can play. We can do these things and, yeah. and be okay. Um, yeah, so you, don't, yeah. you don't need food every hour. Another example you ever noticed, too, how another one playing off of the Clean Your Plate Club is – Say then a kid like wants ice cream or you get them ice cream. You know, a little kid, they can be eating and then halfway through the ice cream, they're like, I'm done and want to and then, yeah. plop it down. But then you're thinking, well, I paid for that. You're finishing it, you know? And again, not another force, like their actual kind of appetite told them like, I'm done. You know, I'm good. I'm done with this. They're listening to those cues, but then it's over. You're overriding them yeah. by telling them they have to finish. And then that, that lasts, mm-hmm. like that sticks with them. You know, it's a behavior. And so realize if you woke up, you had breakfast, you know, you're having dinner coming 5, 6 p.m. uh, You're not going to need as much food. No. As you think, especially snacky stuff. Like it's not even. That stuff doesn't even fill you up anyways. You know, it just it feels good to eat snacks. Yeah. But outside of that, you're good. (laughs) So challenge yourself, you know, to bring less snacks, more, you know, meal stuff Mm -hmm. if you can or plan to take a break and then have lunch or something like that. that's a meal where you're sitting down and eating at a table or something separate from the play place. Hopefully they're not having alcoholic beverages. So you don't got to worry about those, <laughs> those calories. Um, but yeah, so keep that in mind. Back to the main topic, create the rules, parameters, or, you know, shape your day and weekend around it. Mm-hmm. That's and, also and build that one. mindset, build that strength. The strength to realize that you can skip a meal and Mm -hmm. you can plan that, hey, I'm having this bigger meal in the future or or I had one in the past. Um, And you're just being aware. That's all it is. It always comes back to awareness. Yeah. So No matter what it is. mm -hmm. You got to be present as a human being. And on the most simple level, yeah, like just don't let barbecues and summer fun turn into 
Something you dread? Yeah, or... you're, you dread in like vacation mode to where you're just willy-nilly. Yeah. Oh, well, because I'm having a, I mean, and this happens. People, maybe because I'm having a barbecue this weekend, well, I'm already blowing it with that. Whatever. Screw this whole week. And you just eat ad lib all week long. So instead of one 3,000 calorie day, then you just turn into, mm-hmm. you know, a whole week of yeah. whatever. Or instead of one meal that is going to be lunch. You're like, well, this is happening today, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna have brunch too. And I'm gonna have dinner. I'm gonna dinner. have the cookout. I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna keep picking out because you know it's already whatever. Blown. Don't do that. No. Just have your fun. Get back to normal. Mm-hmm. Eat less the rest of the day. Yeah. Be aware. Don't ignore these things. And like, you're gonna be cool if you don't eat your normal food for all your meals. Mm-hmm. Like, we're gonna survive. We did it for a long time. No. Nope. We didn't used to always have food. Now we got too much. Yep. Every second if you want. All right. So let me, let's end with this. There's one dish, one thing that you can't say no to. Even if you have, you know, everything we just talked about, but it's there. That I can't say no to? Maybe you didn't plan on, but you're like, I got to have that. Dude, honestly, I think it's like good mac and cheese. I know I just said that I don't like cheese by itself, <laughs> oh. but like mac and cheese when it's combined with some carbs and it's so good that dude, I just can't not take mm. some. It's just mm. my one. I, lo- I love some good mac and cheese. What's yours? I don't know. In the summer, glass of milk, glass of milk. <laughs> um, I, get, I, I was just at a birthday party thing, and I it was easy to have. They had barbecue, like pork barbecue, mm-hmm. which you had that, and then tons of side stuff. And honestly, yeah, whatever with that. But then I still do want and like to have a dessert. Banana pudding. So I would say, yeah, like something like – and then if there was options of dessert, like, yeah, I would not pick cake. I would not – Nah. I, I, I like more pudding mm. – Ice creamy type stuff. Yeah. Damn, now you got me wanting banana pudding. So yeah, banana pudding. I'm gonna make one for the next. And I cookout. even try to rationalize <laughs> banana pudding. Like, would I even pick that? And it's funny because I feel like it's nothing I ever would, but then when it's there, it's the one thing I want. Yeah, but it's probably because you I never had it. it. I'm like, yeah, man, those vanilla wafers. Dude, they just hit. Just the texture, <sighs> the temperature. Uh, yeah, banana, I'm, I'm making some banana pudding, man. We're gonna eat the whole dish. Just me and you. I mean, I'm trying to think of another pudding. No, but there's not another. I'm trying to think pudding, of no. like cakes. No. What other what other dessert dishes are there? I mean, pies. Those are popular. So pie, pie like apple pie, I, cherry pie. Yeah, I'd still rather have like the puddings. You know, I you know even sometimes like those like put it's like mousse and mm-hmm. like dirt dessert. What is that called? It's like Cool Whip and yeah, yeah you're talking Oreos, about it's like layers of things, stuff like that. Yeah, I take that. Yeah. Damn, yeah. you're the guy that took that, huh? So give me some like dirt dessert. Dirt dessert. Some banana pudding. <sighs> yeah, just cool, I'm just ready for pudding. Cool and mushy. I'm like a baby, man. You are. All your food's just really yeah, easy to eat. Like ground beef <laughs> and rice. I could chew it with gums. <laughs> banana pudding. Oh man. I would you know what though? Like I do have a soft spot for donuts. I know it's not for most people, but like, dude, a good donut. <sighs> I don't know why. It's just perfect. So I like donuts, but if there is ever a red light food, man, because once I start eating them, I'll whack back like whatever's Bro, available. So easy to and eat. they make me sick to my stomach. Yeah. I, I'm the same way, but here we are. <laughs> you don't care. I don't care. So, I mean, dude, and I'm telling you, just that's why we don't honestly, get them. I'd probably plain glazed. I could just crush 12 plain You know, I like that, and I think part of the reason I don't like it is because I can eat so many. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. The flavored ones, like, it's almost more satisfying to me. One of my other favorites, which I I just, like, I I can't stand that it's one of my favorites. It just feels wrong, but Boston cream pie. Dude, dude, one of my all-time favorites, and I agree with how you feel. (laughs) Oh. No, dude, that, when in doubt, like, those never let me down. And, like, hey, it comes... It's got the, it's got uh, the creamy the texture. Creamy, you can almost chew it without That's pudding. Yeah. Ooh, dude. Boston cream pie pudding. <sighs> what if you just mashed up a bunch of Boston cream donuts and, I don't know. And ate it? Whatever pudding ingredients. A little chocolate drizzle on top. Yeah. There it is. Damn. 
Do you want bana- a banana pudding or that? I mean, I'm trying that if it's available. Half and half. And then I'll make, then I'll decide. Then you make your decision. Yeah. I'm going to look it up when we're done. I'm going to make it today. We're getting worked up. Yeah, I know. Desserts, man. We just... So, okay. so if I know that's there, yeah, I'm sticking. I'm going to have a little bit Bro, of lean chicken meats, breast baby. off the grill, have my drinks, and I know I'm going hard on the... Bucket of pudding. On the pudding. I'm cool with that. Just you, chicken breast, burger. You can go lean burgers, too. That's another easy one. 93.7. It doesn't taste quite the same, but, man, you still... That red meat. Mm. I'm Googling. Don't do that. Most popular puddings. Boston cream pudding. See if it already exists. Bro, it exists. What do you mean, does it already exist? It's right here. Oh, man. Plum pudding? Nah, we don't. Stop. You know what? Dude, I forget that plums exist Dude, sometimes. I don't know who said this, but the most popular dessert in the world. Sticky toffee pudding. It sounds too niche to be the it most. It does. I feel but you like know they're, what? Just, they're just saying that. There's a lot of people in a lot of other countries. They said, too. they say. But I'm not going to lie, it looks good. <laughs> All right, so here, here, here's Ooh. the official top 10 favorite desserts in the UK. I got something for you after this. I don't, I don't really know. Let's, let's see what number. We got I'm a pie. Doing. We got a scone. We got red velvet cake. That's my favorite cake. Churros. I, I, I like, like a churro. Bread and butter pudding. Bread and butter. I mean, I've heard of bread pudding. Cheesecake. Cheesecakes. If I, yeah, that's my favorite tradition. I don't like cheesecake. I like cheesecake. I just don't. I've tried it. Cheesecake. Okay, this is where it's getting weird. This is where, okay, I'm judging UK people. Number four is jelly. Just jelly? Now it's getting worse. Number three is carrot cake. Stop it. Number two is Victoria sponge. Okay, I've seen that on the Great British Baking Show. And number one is the apple crumble. This is an awful... I mean, the apple crumble, I, I understand. The other number ones... Number one, an apple crumble? No, nah, man. I mean, I don't... Not as number one, but I would eat it. All right. All so, right. So, the word you were looking for, parfait. There we go. Parfait. Bro. Give me some parfait. Boston cream. Stop it. Parfait. Can we show our listeners? I wish we could. I wish you guys could see this. That's it. Uh, it looks like Whitney could make that. She could make it. Even I could make that. It has cake in there. You could probably just get a bunch of donuts. But I and definitely smash will up. like cake better with layers of Boston, Boston cream. cream. Mm. Pie. Yeah, we should go with that. Get your own cup. Okay, if they came in in little like so, I still okay. So here's where. So I'm looking at this parfait in these layers, and my urge still is. I want to mash all this up <laughs> and make it into a pudding. <laughs> oh man, it looks, dude, it looks good. And even when I, you know, you, you get like a granola parfait, I'd rather have it all mashed up. Get the and, granola out of it, man. And a pudding. Granola parfait. Granola is a whole. I could do a whole podcast on why I hate granola. Right. So there we are. That you know, let us know on social media what your, you know, can't say no. Yeah. What's your can't say no dessert? So I'm going now the whole day. This is this is it. I'm going if I know I'm going to cook out at you know with the pool with the pool or whatever. I'm going grilled meats from the from the barbecue from the grill. Having my drinks. Boom. And your two step. My trulies. Trulies. My vodka thingies. I like it. I'll probably be able to pass on all. I'll probably all dessert unless unless I don't want to be rude. Unless it's kind of like, hey, I made this for you, you know. But for the most part, everyone's kind of going gathering stuff, potato salad. Nah, nah I'm not a potato salad guy. You know, pasta salad. Pasta don't salad. Care. Nah, man. Like I will skip all of it. And then I'm waiting for that pudding. Doesn't matter what kind now. <laughs> now I need to know other types of pudding around pudding. there. Blueberry, blueberry pudding. Blueberry. Would that be good as a pudding? Like, I love blueberries, but... It had to be more, like... Some did ha- lemon, oof, lemon blueberry pudding? Lemon pudding with some blueberries in it? Mm. I would do that. Banana pudding. And that's that's what I... That would be my choice. That's your day? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd probably be the same. Grilled meat, and then a donut. Yeah. Or 
three donuts. <laughs> rest of the day, I'm just having some Greek yogurt or like... Yeah, that's what I do. Canned chicken breast. Just Greek yogurt and protein powder, and then I'll just get home and eat whatever meat we have in the fridge, probably shredded chicken, mm-hmm. and call it a day. If I need to. If I eat enough meat at the cookout, then I'll just chill. Hang it up. Yep. So just make some... You know, and realize if you normally do whatever all day, you'd have your... Like, you'd overeat. If you just then... Make some effort. Even if you just still go and do everything hog wild at the event, but then you skipped one meal or just ate less for a meal, that's a great start. That's a you you brought some awareness and balanced things out a little bit. Progress right? over perfection. So that's even fine too. You like sometimes some of the stuff we talk about probably sounds like crazy and realize I didn't just one day decide to do nah. all this. Um, it yeah, became from you notice, oh, this works. I can manage this, this and that and actually enjoy it more. These kind of things. It's trial and error. That's where you land. But really just start somewhere with making one little change. Yeah, you got to try something and then you'll evolve from there. And what you find will probably be different from us or it might be because we're all a little bit different. So mm-hmm. yeah, don't sweat that. We're all not right. perfect and we're not ideal. So not everyone wants to eat soft food all the time. <laughs> You're basically a baby. I eat sharp cheddar cheese. That's not soft, is it? I mean, it's not crunchy. Nah. Could you eat it with only gums? No. Nah, you couldn't. <laughs> Just swallow it whole. Need these teeth. It's going to clog you up. All right. Enjoy your summers, your cookouts. Let us know uh, your, you know, your go-to dessert. And then uh, what are your strategies? Mm-hmm. You know, holler at us. All right. See you guys. See you. As always, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to learn more, check us out at CoastalFitnessVA.com or GaryDeagle.com. We'll see you next time.